Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 6th, 5.43 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. March corn futures up two and three quarters at 6.43 and a quarter. January soybeans up 13 and a quarter at 14.51. March Chicago wheat unchanged at 7.39. March Kansas City wheat down two at 8.39 and three quarters. March spring wheat down one at 9.01. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. Uh, ratings and reviews, very much welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Drop me a comment if you have any opinion on anything that I say here. If you want to just drop in and say good morning, those comments, all that stuff really helps YouTube to help me to grow this channel. If you'd like some additional information from me, visit my website, www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today, guys. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of. Charts, graphics, weather information, all of my grain marketing recommendations. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. Yesterday, I was joined by my friend Chris Barron from AgView Solutions. Uh, we talked about 2023 crop rotation questions and uh, some of the things to consider. Also did kind of a quick review of 2023 uh, corn and soybean budgets, uh, how things are looking, uh, corn versus soybeans, what's favorite economically uh, some decision making ideas if you guys are interested in this sort of content sign up today guys new stuff for me every day uh, 50 bucks a month cancel at any time no other fee no other obligation nobody will try to sell you anything else i promise just a ton of info direct from me every day global renewable power capacity is set to double over the next five years the international energy agency iea released its annual outlook regarding renewable fuels this week the group estimates that renewable power capacity is expected to grow by 2,400 gigawatts by 2027. That's equal to the entire power capacity of China in today's terms. That's how Reuters phrased it. The increase is 30% higher than what the group projected just a year ago. They believe, this group, that biofuel demand will increase by 22% over the next five years and that global solar capacity will almost triple during the same time frame. The IEA represents 31 member countries. I believe they're based in Paris, but the U.S. is a founding member. And of those 31 countries, they account for like 75% of global energy demand. Um, so this is, you know, something we're going to talk about nonstop uh, over the coming weeks, months, years. This is the tip of the iceberg in terms of news. Uh, we've all heard about sustainable aviation fuel and uh, more biodiesel and more crush plants. Uh, we're going to hear a lot more about this. The projections are out there. It appear, appears to be the real deal, certainly. Soybean planting in Brazil nears completion. Well-followed private group Agrural estimates that the country's bean crop was 91% planted through last Thursday. That's slightly behind last year's pace. They were 94% the same week last year. The country's first and smaller corn crop is 93% planted versus 94 last year, according to the group. Uh, Agrural did cite a few concerns regarding heat and dryness in some areas, although general consensus is that a record crop in Brazil is probable. This map on my screen here is total precipitation over the last seven days. A lot of these green areas were like an inch to two inches of rain. In Brazil, these blue areas uh, could have been three or four inches uh, localized. So they've seen some rain. They've got more rain in the forecast. The setup looks uh, pretty darn good, really. Now, this is good for the soybean crop. When it comes to corn, that second and larger corn crop, which is like 75% of production, they don't plant that till after the first of the year. So we're still kind of in the dark there. But when it comes to soybeans, Brazil is in a pretty darn good shape the way that it looks. U.S. corn shipments remain poor, a total of 524,000 metric tons. That's about 21 million bushels of U.S. corn was inspected for export last week. That print was down 33% from the same week last year. Accumulated shipments for the current marketing year of just 6.3 million metric tons are also down 33%, just coincidentally, uh, versus last year's 9.4 million. So USDA projects that U.S. corn exports will decline by only 13% this year. USDA probably needs to reduce its export forecast. I don't know if they do that on Friday or wait another month or two. Now, some people might argue that it's too early to draw any big conclusions regarding corn shipments because you typically see your strongest corn shipments in, say, like the first, second quarter into the third quarter of the year. The way it typically works when it comes to U.S. exports is that we ship a ton of soybeans in the fourth quarter following harvest. And then once we get into like 
you know, Brazilian crop coming online, that's when we're shipping more corn. But uh, the, the problem is that you can't ship what you haven't sold is, is how some people would phrase it. And sales are absolutely terrible. Accumulated export sales are running 48% behind last year's pace. So this is a, a problem. And I think USDA has to come down with that export number. It's just a question of when. If you look at the chart on my screen here, this is weekly uh, export inspections. And these uh, highlighted bars here is the fourth quarter of each year. So you can see even versus like prior fourth quarters, we're way below where we probably should be. Maybe barring 2019, we were pretty similar. Um, you're going to see an increase in, in you know, January, February, March into that time frame. I just don't know that it's going to be enough to hit these USDA projections. Australia's wheat crop will probably be record large. Despite widespread flooding in some eastern portions of the country, Australia's government projects a record crop of 36.6 million metric tons. That's a little bit above USDA's most recent estimate of 34 and a half. It's an increase of about 1% from last year's previous record, uh, Australia's government said in a statement. While the spring rain has impacted production, yields and quality in some parts of the country, some states are experiencing their best winter crops on record. Australia should be the world's seventh largest wheat producer this year, give or take, behind China, the European Union, India, Russia, the U.S., and Canada. Uh, typically, Australia and Canada are pretty close in terms of total wheat production in any given year, and this year in particular. Crude oil prices posted kind of a nasty downside reversal yesterday. So if you if you look at this uh, chart I've got on my screen here, this is yesterday morning when uh, WTI peaked like just below 83 bucks, and then they finished the day below 77 yesterday, ugly stuff. So the, the story, or I guess the narrative in regard to crude prices is this. We started the week higher on news that OPEC would stick with those production cuts that were initiated in October. And then um, later in yesterday's session, the market fell apart. Uh, we had some ISM data out yesterday regarding U.S. services, uh, the U.S. services industry. Activity was quite a bit better than expected in November, which is it's a good news is bad news situation uh, when it comes to the Fed and their policy. So when the Fed sees good economic data, that means that they don't have to really um, put the brakes on these rate hikes. They can continue to push harder if they're seeing good economic data. So I think that's why crude fell yesterday. Um, it's kind of soft here again this morning. We've still got the whole story with the Russian price cap and all that. I'm just not quite sure exactly how that is going to pan out. Cattle market was mixed yesterday. Feeder cattle were higher. Uh, we'll see what develops here today. In the outside markets, we've got the U.S. dollar a little bit lower. Stocks are about flat. Gold's up three bucks. Crude oil's down. At, crude oil is down a dollar oh nine in the uh, January WTI seventy five eighty four last trade. Have a great day today, guys. I'll talk to you same time tomorrow.